What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at Victor Crowley, the fourth installment into the Hatchet film franchise to once again be written and directed by Adam Green. Uh, the This film, the overall premise of this movie is that it takes place 10 years after the events of the original trilogy in which the sole survivor Andrew Young is being pursued to star in a movie about the massacre of Honey Isle, of, on Honey Island Swamp. While that's happening, him along with a group of people are stuck in an unfortunate plane crash that lands into the swamp and the group of filmmakers that are, who are also in the swamp as well doing location scouting with a tour guide uh, are searching through random YouTube videos trying to find the actual voodoo spell that uh, resurrected Victor Crowley. Uh, they eventually do, Victor's resurrected and another massacre ensues. <coughs> uh, so yeah that's basically the plot line of Victor Crowley. You know, aside from the plain aesthetic, it's basically a remake of the first movie. That's what Victor Crowley is. Victor Crowley is a remake of Hatchet 1. Uh, so I'm going to say this. I was overall entertained by Hatchet 4. Uh, I do, I like, but at the end of the day, I do like the movie, but I'm not going to lie. I didn't really think this movie was necessary because I think the original trilogy ended on a satisfactory note where it left it open for a possible continuation but it also ended the story enough where if it would have ended right here then it would have been fine i think if you're going to do another movie after hatchet 3 you need to have a story that's worth telling and something that you can really like uh sink your teeth into i understand adam green overall made this movie on the for the 10 year anniversary of hatchet 1 and he did it for the fans which is awesome and i appreciate that but I'm not going to lie, this movie plays more as a meta parody than it does as a serious slasher movie. Not to say that the other Hatchet movies didn't have, you know, comedic elements to them, to them, because they did. But Victor Crowley, to me, is pushing more for comedy than it is for actual, than it is for actual uh, thrill, uh, thrills and scares. <clears throat> not to say that you don't have any of those elements in this movie, because you do. I just think that this movie really doesn't really do much to justify its existence and reason to have been made. Like, there's no there's no direction to take the Victor Crowley in anymore. It's this, his story is said and done. It really ended when he was when he was reunited with his father's ashes. Now that he's resurrected, uh, where do you go from here? But um, I'm gonna look at Victor Crowley more or less as a 10 year anniversary movie and more or less as an epilogue to the original trilogy that when you get to the post credit scene, you know, sets up the idea of maybe more to come. Uh, so let me get the positives out of the way first. Things I do like about this movie, I do like the cast. Uh, Perry Shen returns as the character of Andrew, who was who is the sole survivor of the first movie. And I love the fact that Perry Shen has become the de facto lead of the Hatcher franchise. That's pretty cool because he's the only original cast member to be in all four movies. And when you get to Hatchet Three, he actually starts to become more. Or he actually slowly starts to become more of a focal point. And Victor Crowley pretty much has him front and center as the sole survivor of the Honey of Honey Island Swamp. But people think that Victor Crowley was not real and that he was the one that committed the murders, even though it was proven that he had nothing to do with it. So he's more or less trying to rehabil rehabilitate his image, so to speak. <clears throat> But at the same time, he's also profiting because he wrote a book about it, and now there is now he's gonna get involved with a bunch of uh, with a bunch of uh, college kids who want to make a who want to make a movie about the, about the massacre. <clears throat> uh, I thought Perry Shen as Andrew did a fine job. Like to me, Andrew never really came across as a sleazy type of dude. He came across as somebody who was more or less. It looked like he was being forced to do stuff like this. Like he didn't really want to do it. And I think Perry Shen does a really good job of not making Andrew a sleazeball, but also making him likable in a way. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that's really all, the, all on that. Of course, Andrew also has an ex-wife named Sabrina, who's a talk show host. Uh, the actress who plays Sabrina, she's okay. Uh, so nothing really to say about that. Uh, and, the, and the four college kids making their little mock movie, they're fine too. They're nothing, there's nothing really to them. Uh, now, in terms of what this movie does have that I do like, you do have Felicia Rose, who, from the Sleepaway Camp movies, 
she she plays the publicist of Andrew Yen. She's very entertaining in this movie, and she has a very memorable death in which Victor Crowley se- chops, t- rips her arm off while she has a cell phone in it. She shoves it through her taint and up and down her throat while her hand is still holding the cell phone. It's probably one of the most creative kills that this franchise has ever done, and it's a kill that is absolutely gnarly. Uh, I like it. Uh, that's really Felicia, that's, and that's really Felicia for old in this movie. She's the publicist, and she has the best death scene. Um, you have Dave Sheridan, who plays this character of Dylan, who at, who was an actor slash tour guide on the Victor on the on the Victor Crowley residence, which has been turned into a tourist attraction. <clears throat> uh, I think Dave Sheridan is the star of this movie. I think he's the standout cast member of this movie. I found him to be extraordinarily entertaining. He never came across as cringy or as uh, annoying. He came across as likable and. The cringiness of him is what makes him likable because he's a genuine. He, he he comes across as like a genuine hero who wants to help everybody, but also has like a like a airheadedness to him. But it's but it's like that lovable airheadedness to him. So yeah, Dave Sheridan, props to you. You uh, props to you. And of course, he goes out and he has a hero's death, in which he gores Victor Crowley through a plane, through a pl- through the through, the, through a plane engine, pretty much eviscerating both of them. <clears throat> so. Good shit for Dylan. Uh, and you also have cameos from Tony Todd, who makes a cameo return as Reverend Zombie through a YouTube video that resurrects Victor Crowley. Cool to see Tony Todd come back. Uh, Q from Impractical Jokers has a role in this movie, which he in which he works. I think he works for either Sabrina or the publicist. I'm not sure, but if you like Impractical Jokers, it's a show that I've maybe seen maybe a handful of episodes from. But yeah, if you like Impractical Jokers and if you like Q. He has a nice little role in this movie. He has a death scene where he gets scalped by Victor Crowley, which is kind of gnarly. <clears throat> and he also has a girlfriend that he gets impregnated. Uh, actually, I think the pregnant girlfriend has the most jarring death of all because she drowns while being trapped under a bunch of uh, plane seats. It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of jarring to see. It's like the most, it's most like, of all the kills in this movie, that's the one to me that feels the most jarring because it has nothing to do with Victor Crowley. It has more of a sense of realism because. Yeah, if you're trapped under chairs and you and you're barricaded and you can't get out and 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 you're gonna drown, that's a scary feeling. That's probably the most visceral death scene in the entire movie because it feels the most real. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that could be that's, that's a little jarring in the movie that has an overall light-hearted tone to it, so to speak. Like this is not a dark and grim movie like let's say the original trilogy is. This one goes for comedy, goes more for laughs. It goes more for that meta humor. That was really that was really made famous by Scream, and how you want to view meta humor in horror movies is entirely uh, is entirely how you perceive it. You can say it's cool, you can say it's clever, or you can say it's just been done to death and it's getting kind of boring. Victor Crowley to me is kind of in that middle, in which some of it is good and then some of it is like, okay, can we get serious for just one little second? <clears throat> I mean, the point. I mean, there are moments where Victor Crowley goes goes and goes right out in self-parody which can be a little annoying at times <clears throat> but uh that's just how i perceive it to be to be perfectly true to be honest with you uh in terms of like other things this movie has again i can appreciate the fact that adam green did this on a shoe on a shoestring budget with absolutely in under two weeks in total secrecy that's awesome uh, that mean at the same time because he has such a shoestring budget and a shoestring time frame a lot of this movie takes place on this crashed airplane and it doesn't really make for the most exciting movie like the hatchet movies work best when you're open when it's open and you're in the swamp and you're running around and no matter where you go you end up in a big circle that puts you right on that X mark and that X mark is the Crowley residence <clears throat> this movie it's just way too confined it's just too like, it feels like there's nowhere to go. I don't know. I mean, confined horror movies can work, but in a movie like this, where you're used to more open space, it kind of just, I don't know. It, it, I don't think it works for the Hatcher franchise. That's what, that's what I'm trying to really get at. Not to say that it's all dead. I'm going to say, because I, I think I, overall, I think Adam Green did the, did the best possible job that he could i'm just indifferent to it as what as is the overall opinion i'm trying to give <clears throat> uh 
I mean, aside from that, I mean, this movie does have some good kills. The special effects look good for a shooting budget. Special effects do look good. Uh, Victor Crowley, the overall makeup and look, is not as good as the third movie, but it's still solid. Once again, Kane Hodder returns in his second most famous role, and he absolutely kills it as Victor Crowley. Uh, <clears throat> Kane Hodder kills it as Victor Crowley, and I love how Kane gives Victor like an under like an understated sense of humor. Just by his body language that he that he put that he gives the character, by the way he does like these little things that makes Victor feel more like a character and not just some and not just some unstoppable thing. Like it's the same thing he did with Jason Voorhees. Like Kane Hodder gave Jason Voorhees a personality and it and it added more layers and dimension to a character that's just really that just run that just stalks you. But he gave him like these little nuances that makes him feel that makes him feel like a character. He brought that same thing to Victor Crowley, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> uh, in terms of how Adam Green directed Suspense, uh, it's not bad. Uh, it's actually pretty decent. I like it. I mean, I think it's actually pretty cool that Victor Crowley was the first horror was one of the first horror movies to use the idea of motion lights. There's a scene where these two characters are hiding in a room, and it's, and it's being done through motion lights, and the light, you know, it's when the light goes flickers on and off, on and off. And when it flickers on and off, Victor Crowley appears in the doorway and he attacks one of the characters. This scene is that was actually used by David Gordon Green in Halloween 2018 and that motion light scene. <clears throat> so you can say Victor Crowley did it first and uh, Michael Myers kind of stole it from him. So I think that's actually pretty cool. <clears throat> but uh, I mean, yeah, aside from the characters, which are fine and the acting, which is solid. There's not really a whole lot to go off when it comes to this movie. It's like, it, it is what it is. It's just a hatchet movie. It's hacking and slashing. But at the same time, it's not as interesting as the original trilogy, which has that, which continues one movie after another and actually tells a much more engaging story. Victor Crowley doesn't really tell an engaging story to me. It kind of tells a paint by numbers story that really doesn't need to be there. Like, this movie, to me, acts as a 10-year anniversary epilogue to the original trilogy. And for that, that's cool. But in terms of bringing back the, Crow the Victor Crowley character for another slew of movies, I don't know. I mean, the story wasn't the story didn't really hook me. There's nothing really here that hooked me. There's, like, little things here and there that, that, that did it for me. Uh, there's certain characters who I wish that weren't killed off, like Dylan, that I think you could have gotten more mileage out of in sequels that didn't do it for me. But, you know, you have the Andrew Yen character once again survives. So if when the two, when the sequel does eventually come out, if hopefully does in this lifetime, <clears throat> I'll like to see what direction they do go with that, along with one of the Survivor Girls as well, see how that handle, how that gets handled. And the movie's mid credit scene pretty much confirms that Danielle Harris will be back, that Mary Beth, that Mary Beth did survive the original trilogy, and that she's been waiting for Victor the entire time, and she's loaded with a shotgun. <clears throat> So, it'll be interesting to see how all that is going to play out. <clears throat> but, uh, in terms of what this movie is as by itself, it's a fine little addition to the Hatchet franchise. Honestly, truthfully, you can watch this movie or you can skip this movie and it's not really going to affect anything. But if you do watch it as a Hatchet fan, it does have some good things in it. You know, it does have some good kills. It does got some fun moments and good characters. It does overall do does have a lot of good funny moments. Um, Adam Green plays it has a cameo as a ship as a uh, as the captain of the airplane, and he has like this running gag where he's doing announcements and he's like saying, "Uh, weather is uh uh," so that was that was entertaining. I mean, it it dragged on maybe longer than it should, but it, that is what it is. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, as an overall grade for Victor Crowley, I'm just gonna give it a solid six point five out of ten. It's not as strong as the original trilogy, but in terms of a movie that's trying to maybe kick off another set, it's not a bad foundation to start off. It's not a bad foundation to start off from, but I do think it struggles to pretty much justify its existence. But does that make it bad? No, it's still very, very entertaining. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Victor Crowley. Let me, your, let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe. I'll check you back next time for more. Also, this movie has a cameo by Tyler Maine in the opening prologue who gets killed by Victor Crowley. That's awesome. So, in the Hatcher franchise, Victor has killed 2009 Jason and 2007, and 2007 Michael Myers. Kane Hodder is and always will be 
the GOAT.